Hi guys and welcome to today's video. In today's video we'll be showing you how you can do colour grading and correcting in HitFilm 3 Express. Let's begin. So to start off you're going to have to import your media. To do this press the import button, it's very simple. Then select in and out points in your clip through this little timeline here in the trimmer. Set, press I on your keyboard to set an in point and O to set an out point. Then press this button to put it into your video. Now currently we're in the editor as we, as we see this playback. You can do color correction and grading in the editor, however sometimes it's best if you do it in the composite shot. And just for the purposes of this video I'm going to do it in a composite shot. So to show you what I mean, press make composite shot, this little button here, and call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it flower color grade. Now once you've got this open, you'll see that the clip has extended to the full length of the timeline. So to start off you're going to apply an effect. The first thing that I do when I start color grading is apply brightness and contrast effect. You can search for this up or go to color correction. Now just drag it onto this layer here and wait for it to load and it should come up nice. Okay, so now we've got this brightness and contrast. We can adjust the brightness and the contrast of our clip. Now different films look, now obviously films look different when you have different brightness levels and contrast and different films uh, and different levels of brightness and contrasts give different looks. For a happier tone, obviously go brighter, and I would recommend a bit less contrast. Not necessarily putting the contrast down, but don't go all the way like this. Um, however, when you're trying to create a more moody or emotionally impacting scene, uh, then I would recommend maybe bring the brightness down and the contrast. Now, in in HitFilm 3 Express, when you change the contrast, then you, it also changes the saturation too, so be careful of that. When you use something like their Levels Histogram, it doesn't change the saturation, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. So I want to create a more happy tone in this video, and so I'm going to set the brightness up just a bit, and make it a bit more contrasty to really make those colours pop and stand out. This looks pretty good for me. And uh, so I'm going to apply the next effect. By the way, if you want to, at any time you can try these auto effects, which is auto color, which basically reads your scene and uh, changes the color so that it automatically looks better. Obviously, this doesn't always work, and in this case, <laughs> it doesn't really work at all. So, what you can do is you can change the threshold, which is basically the con contrast and how much it blends with the original or how much the effect is. So I'm just going to delete that and there's also contrast and levels but we're going to be professionals here and we're going to use our own custom effects. So in color correction there's actually loads of different effects whereas in color grading there aren't actually all that many. Now just as a little side note here, you don't always have to apply that effect directly onto your clip. Instead what you can do, especially if you have a composite shop with lots of visual effects in it, is you can create a new grey layer and then apply your effects to this grey layer. And this way, no matter what you do to the layers below it, the grey layer will affect all the layers below it, even if you have different effects on your video. So now we're going to apply some more effects. If you go into our colour correction here, there's a whole bunch we can do. You can set color balance, color temperature, and any of these mixed things that you didn't do right when you recorded the video using these two settings. Also with, of course, the auto settings here. However, we're just going to drag uh, a hue, saturation, and lightness effect, and a levels histogram effect. These are slightly more complicated, and they take a bit of time to get used to, so if you drag them on you don't really know what they're doing, then don't worry, I felt the first way, the same way when I first started. So in this hue, saturation and lightness, if we go into the master there's a few things we can do. Hue shift changes the shift of the hue so we 
probably don't need to do any of this because it has some quite drastic effects. Saturation is how vibrant and strong the colours are and this is where I was saying when we increase the contrast here it also increased the vibrance. If we uh, change the saturation to minus 16 or something then this is how it would look if only contrast was applied and not saturation. For example 100 and something like this is how it probably originally was. So I'm just going to set this, these back to normal and uh, obviously for a more happy shot you would want a more saturated feel, not always but it depends what you're going for. And lightness is sort of similar except it tends to blow out your image a lot whereas here it just changes everything. This tends to only bring out the highlights. Now you can also change the hue shift of different colors in your video. For example I can change the saturation of reds or or how bright the reds are for example and this is really useful. Say you have this warm glow in your video or this ray of sunshine that comes down, you really want to emphasize that, you can find that color in these tabs and either change the color, saturate it to make it stronger or even brighten it. So in this shot I've just got a bit of red and I want to just saturate that a bit, not over the top but I just want to saturate that and I make it maybe just a little bit brighter. This way it really stands out from the rest of the video and the flowers and all of that stuff. Now if we lower the, the general saturation but really boost the red then we can see that everything else looks desaturated except for the reds and this will really really bring out the reds should we need to. So I'm just going to lower the saturation a bit and lower the saturation here and we can see that the reds are still standing out pretty strong here. I'm also going to increase, increase the lightness a bit. So that's done with our hue, saturation and lightness effect, sorry about that. And now we can go into our levels histogram, which is quite a bit more complicated. Here we can see we've got R, G and B. Now this means, oh, it's difficult to explain, but this means you're using all the colour channels. When you're inputting the black, it means you're putting more black into the shadows, which means you're crunching the shadows and making them darker and it tends not to affect the highlights as you can see. The highlights are still pretty white. Yet the same applies for white. They can be pretty white except some of the darker areas are still pretty dark. Gamma is the overall brightness of your image and output black and input white uh, basically, um, for example, makes it darker and brighter the opposite of what these do. They, these inc increased contrast and these decrease contrast. That's an easy way for you to think about it. RGB combined is very similar except it only focuses on the, um, on the lightness instead of all of them. Now you can also change specific color channels. For example, in the shadows here, maybe we want to boost how much red, how decrease how much red there is in the shadows. We can make them, this way we can make the shot look really green in the shadows. I'm just going to actually have a bit of this just so that we can bring out these red flowers a bit more. Now I'm also going to go into the blue and even increase the blue in the shadows to create a colder feeling in the shadows. Now to really bring out these highlights I'm going to add a bit of contrast into the shot by adding yellow into the highlights. This is a common technique uh, and it's basically where you create contrast by having two opposite contrasting colors here and you put them into the two contrasting ends of the color scale. You never really want to overdo this effect and I think I've overdone it a bit here but if it's subtle then you can create really nice cinematic looking video. I'm also going to lift the red gamma which is basically the amount of red in the video overall and also maybe yeah I'll increase the output in the highlights a bit so that we can really see that red popping out. Actually you know what I'm just going to increase the gamma and I'm going to reduce the red in the blacks. This way it's greener and it the red in the in the flower here really stands out. 
So to see what we've done and we can't do, we can just hide this grade layer now. This really is useful and this is one of the reasons why you'd want to use a grade layer because you can keep it separate from everything else that you've done and you can see how you've changed your video. Here you can see I've really brought out the flowers and everything from the rest of the background and it really gives a nice contrasty look. I prefer the, the finished product to the end product, however there's there's still some things we can change in this video. Some of these cool sorry about this, I yeah, never mind. Some of these effects we can do are, for example, a vignette. When we apply a vignette, then we're basically applying a vignette. If you don't know what a vignette is, it's these dark edges around the corner of your video that uh, will basically make it look somewhat more cinematic. It's difficult to explain, but it's, uh, it darkens the edge of you, your video, and sometimes you would find this on such as like old film stock or something. And uh, I usually sometimes apply a vignette, depends, but I'm just going to go with a vignette to show you guys here. Now there's another thing which I'm going to show you guys, it's not exactly colour correction and colour grading, but it's something that you're probably going to use a lot. It's called a letterbox. If you don't know what a letterbox is, it's sometimes where in these films you have a widescreen version. When you watch a movie, sometimes there are these black bars on the top and bottom of the screen. And sometimes when you watch old videos, there are black bars on the right and left hand of the screen. This is because they're in different aspect ratios and the video was filmed in a more widescreen or a less widescreen format. So to get this effect we can search it up for it, it's in the generate tab, and we can simply apply it to our grade. Once we apply it to our grade then we'll be able to see these lines on the top and bottom of our video. Let me just open this up and we can see that we can do a whole bunch of things. We can change the colour, for example, of these black bars, although you'll always pretty much want to stick with black unless you're doing some sort of special thing. And we can change the aspect ratio. We can have a custom ratio, uh, which is really useful if we want to um, do some sort of transition. Uh, and we can do these standard ratios. This is the old standard ratio. Um, this is the current standard ratio for video, and this is the widescreen ratio that you'll find in many uh, feature films and such, so I'm going to leave it like this. However, you'll notice that our vignette actually is a bit different now. So, this is a 16 to 9 aspect ratio vignette, however now the height should be a little bit less because of the different size of our video. So, to do this, do your height divided by 2.35 to 1, oh, 2.35, sorry, 817, and that's our fixed up vignette. Now, that's really cool, and um, this is basically how you color grade and correct in HitFilm 3 Express. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, um, and leave a like, share this video with your friends, other people you know, uh, comment down below for uh, suggestions on how I should make other videos and what other videos I should make next, and uh, obviously subscribe for more awesome videos just like this one. I will see you guys next week, if not earlier. See you guys later. Bye.